Welcome to the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I got some great guests. Just did a podcast swap of discussion with the AI T- Today podcast team. And I have Ron and Kathleen here. You want to introduce yourselves and your little in your podcast because it's it's really worldwide known. So give a little introduction to your podcast, if you don't mind. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathleen Mulch. I am one of the hosts of the AI Today podcast. We have been running the AI Today podcast. We're going on five years now and we publish it weekly. We have not yet run out of things to say and we have many more episodes planned. So we're really excited about that. On our podcast, we like to talk about AI today. So not, you know, the past about what happened with AI and not, you know, really kind of forward looking with this idea of maybe of artificial general intelligence of how Uh, you know, where people want to go. And we also don't talk too much about headline news with AI. We really want to talk about, uh, you know, practical applications. We've done an education series that has been incredibly popular. We've done an AI failure series. So we talk about common reasons why AI projects fail. And we've recently um, been doing an ethical AI series as well. So how to think about running ethical AI projects and why it's important, why it matters. And I'll let my uh, co-host introduce himself. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Ron Schmelzer. I'm also one of the managing partners at Cognitica and a co-host at the AI Today podcast. And you know, when we started the AI Today podcast, a lot of it was you know, still very new to people just understanding what is AI, what's it good for, what's it not good for, terminology, trying to learn about some of the uh, applications of patterns. We spent a lot of time, we actually had a whole use case series of, of AI. And it's always interesting to find out the ones that people are really interested in. AI, of course, in healthcare and finance and all that people are really interested in. But then the ones in construction and in fashion, people have like really been interested in like, yeah, I mean, when we talk about also the term AI has a lot loaded into it. And so we've uh, broken it down. One of, the, one of our popular things is called the seven patterns of AI, where we talk about how AI, specific uh, use patterns of AI, such as conversational systems like chatbots, recognition systems like image and facial and object recognition, uh, also pattern detection for spotting patterns and anomalies, predictive analytics to helping us figure out future pattern trends for, for data. Of course, the popular autonomous systems patterns, machines doing things on their own with little or no human intervention. This idea of something called hyper-personalization, where the more you interact with the system, the more it knows about you and can make more specific recommendations and personalization. And of course, the last one is the goal-driven systems pattern, which is systems that can find solutions to games and puzzles and mazes and things like that. And when you dig into it like that, you can see there really are a lot of applications of AI, but also a lot of uh, things to know, which is why we've never run out of things to say. And that's like, it never ends. And, 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 and I'm gonna wake up bubbles here. So I got bubbles. So yep. we we gotta talk about making an AI version of bubbles. No, no, <laughs> that would be awfully complicated. She's a very complicated cat. Uh, but yeah, but we're not gonna go into that world, maybe. But uh, but that's where everyone's like, oh, we're artificial intelligence. We're gonna do Terminator and stuff like that, right? Well, uh, well the, the cats are still smarter than the smartest machine that we have is still not even as intelligent as a dragonfly we talk about. The mm-hmm. dragonflies yeah. are pretty amazing. I wish we had computers. As, if you could do that, then you can actually build drones that look and operate like a, like a dragonfly. And we're, we're, we're nowhere near that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm amazed how the technology there, but even with Bubbles, I'll say she got nine lives for a reason. I'll say <laughs> it right now. Everyone makes mistakes, and she's a classic. She actually le- legitimately turned into a bubble one time something happened she got a hole in her uh, fossil and she actually became a bubble like bubble wrap (laughs) it was so so her name and i'm like why (laughs) so that was an adventure but in this world and and the ai and the agile world and how it combines really wanted to get a chance that it's it's good to hear from people think from an agile perspective what people are seeing and experiencing on their side when they when they do stuff and you talked about you know, construction, even construction people are trying to become agile or use Scrum or different things to manage their projects. So, you know, I wanted to maybe to share with the listeners and the viewers, because now you're not just in podcast view, form, you're going to be also in video form. So you're like, oh, we're a video. So you're going to be with video across the world too. Um, what do you think that how we can use AI to help application teams in and what we what 
other areas go? Any thoughts? Yeah, so I, I think the first thing that people don't necessarily realize with artificial intelligence and machine learning in particular, which is machine learning as a technology that we're using currently to make our systems more intelligent, is that these are really data projects. And that's like the fundamental core, honestly, of, of the reason why we even had to develop a specific methodology for AI project management called CPMAI, the Cognitive Project Management for AI Methodology because people are used to application development approaches, building code, testing code, deploying code, doing all that sort of stuff. But AI systems really don't, really are not about code because the code for a chatbot is the same whether it's your chatbot, my chatbot, anybody's chatbot. It's like, there's only so many ways to build a chatbot. There's only so many ways to even do image recognition. So what differentiates one chatbot or one image recognition system for another is the data upon which these AI systems the machine learning systems are trained and you get into all sorts of problems when you don't have the data it's not on the right quality it's not at the right level you don't know how to work with it you're, you maybe you have too much and therefore you're spending all of this time trying to clean it up and do the stuff or maybe you have too little or maybe you have the wrong data and so it turns out the success and failure of ai projects is entirely dependent on data so you need to run, know how to run a data project and surprisingly or not many people don't know how to run a data project and so with application developers a lot of a lot of the how ai can help is one help them become data centric yeah. and help them from that perspective but there's some other ways that ai can help right kathleen so. yeah and i like to look at it you know kind of two ways uh for this one how to manage AI projects, right? So Ron said, okay, we need to be kind of, you know, understand how to run data projects at a very fundamental level, but then also how AI can help the team as well. And I think that that comes down to knowing, you know, what AI can and cannot do, what it's good for. But another thing that we talk about a lot, and not everybody always does, is get those stakeholders involved and figure out, really ask them what their pain points are so that you can figure out how to address that and solve it and then see if AI can help with that or if there's something else. I mean, sometimes just, you know, a straight automation yeah. project can help with that and we don't need to overly complicate this or just a little bit of code, right? You know, run a, run, run a quick program. So I think it's looking at it from both of those perspectives and both are equally important, but you need to make sure, you know, you're really understanding how to run these projects and then also how AI can be applied to help yeah and, and and i'll add uh two points one you mentioned your your free class and i'm big on some small gonna go cert it's like why not go get and learn something if you even hear whispers of doing ai in your office your building in your application go take that go go online and take that free class learn something so you have a, a basis for which to have a conversation i totally if you're not doing it and you know with the big r word coming down the pike you're hurting yourself in the long run, right? It's why we give this stuff, this help out. And and what you said about the information and stakeholders, I would even add from an Azure perspective, not just ask them, go see what they do. Go in their environment. I, I heard some of your podcasts where you're talking about they would field it, but they never knew what a grocery store was like before. I remember when you were talking about that. Go in the grocery store and say how it operates and what it is before you start building an AI system or robotics to to accomplish that. And if you haven't done that, I always ask my 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 system engineers, go document how it's done now. Go out there and visit them. And they're like, what do you mean? Go, <laughs> go, go, go. Work with uh, you know a platoon of military or or a person working in a coffee shop. You know. Just hang out in the coffee shop. Just code all. If you're going to help a co coffee shop figure it out or a big giant, I mean, these things are huge now. Just go hang out there. Just absorb what's going on, right? So that's great. And and do you think we're using AI to analyze the data that's coming from the customers? Do you think that's reaching these groups or do you think we're using it enough to do that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the, um, I mean, actually, to be honest, the motivation for artificial intelligence is last wave, and for folks who may not be familiar with it, but AI is actually fairly old. It's a, it's, it's about as old as computing itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even goes beyond before that. You know, uh, Turing, the famous Alan Turing, who developed the foundation, foundations of computing, was of course the same Turing as a Turing test, right? So, so it goes all the way back to the beginnings, and so we've had AI for a long time. But I think, you know, in terms of the like what really motivated this last wave 
was actually dealing with big data. It was big data that really kicked off this last wave. You had companies like Google, of course, and Amazon and Facebook who had like this, this inordinate amount of data. And the challenge that they have was surfacing the right information at the right time. In the case of Facebook, of course, is making their little mm -hmm. social wall work, you know, yeah. and not just showing you everything, which, which would be impossible and not useful, but also maximizing it for whatever the outcomes you want there. Same thing Google with the search or the YouTube algorithm or Netflix on recommending movies. They were powered by like, let's try to find yeah. ways to find the patterns, to uh, make smarter recommendations. That actually kicked off this this last wave. And once we we realized the power of of AI for any of these patterns that I mentioned before, recognition and conversation with chatbots and voice assistants with mm -hmm. Alexa and this and that, then people are like, oh, we have a lot of visibility and what we could do. So. For those people who are looking at extracting more value with, with data, AI is a fundamental way of doing it. We talk about this thing called the DIKUW pyramid, which is a, a helpful construct. Maybe, maybe you can dig a little more into that. Yeah. yeah, we talk about it. I mean, we obviously are very visual. We like to show things, especially as we're describing it to people so they can really understand. So the DIKUW pyramid starts with a foundation of data, right? That's the D. Then we have mm -hmm. information, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So wisdom, is, you know, up at the very top of the pyramid is uh, really like, you know, human level understanding. But data is the foundation. We can't do much with data though, right? Like data on its own, we can't do much mm -hmm. with. We need to be able to analyze it and extract, you know, the, the information that we need. And so then we move up. And so we have various tools that help us with that. Um, so then to get to the knowledge level, that's really where we can apply machine learning. And that really helps us get to that knowledge level. We are not yet at machine reasoning, so we can't get to that understanding. We're really kind of stuck at that K level and then we're not at you know wisdom, the W level. But it helps to understand uh, kind of from that fundamental level upon which all else is built. So data and then as we go up. And I know, um, Ron, do you have any, anything add, to add to that? A fantastic job <laughs> oh, there you go um and i, I want to go into like a lot of scrum a lot of agile a lot of agile coaching a lot of scrum masters it's about how the teams interact and maybe you can share some stories you have of where you thought a really good ai team what do they do to make them so productive or as a team gelling together to get to that level maybe you could share a couple samples of what you saw them doing. Exactly. So um, there are we have examples of both highly functioning <laughs> yeah. teams and non highly functioning teams. <laughs> yeah. Wait, know, we'll, we'll hit the next the non functioning in the next question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let's let's take a look. You always actually always learn more from the non functioning teams. But like uh, for the for highly functional teams, a couple things that they do that they're doing well. There there's this idea, and especially some of the larger organizations of setting this these centers of excellence. It's kind of a um, really more of a of an organizational construct for knowledge sharing within the organization, especially among groups that may not necessarily be talking to each other on a regular basis. And we have a number of large uh, companies that we work with. Many of them, most of them actually are CPMAI certified, so they already have, they know the methodology for working these projects. But even, even sort of within, only the people that are really working those projects really need to know necessarily how to do AI. But there's so many other parties that are involved, people who own the data, even folks around data privacy, data security, they get involved, especially when you're trying to build a machine learning model that impacts the customer. Um, and so the highly functional teams, the ones that are doing a really good job, are spending a lot of their time in sharing data, sharing information, sharing know-how, sharing practices, building up uh, like even case repositories where like we applied this technology to this particular problem. Uh, we we have this like this is like this little formula that 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 we've been using. We actually used to use for our case studies, which is you know what is the problem that you're solving? How are you solving it now? Right? What's the problem with that existing solution? What is the approach that you're using? That's this new uh, AI approach. What is the specifics that are? You know, how are you specifically doing it? What were the outcomes of doing it? And then what are the lessons learned? And so when you look at this thing, you can think, oh, I have the same sort of problem. I have the same problem with my current solution, you know, and so that sort of framework works really well. Now you don't have to do that. You can yeah. do it in any, any way you want, but, but, but like that sort of sharing has been really helpful. That that's what we've seen from some of our really. Uh... Right. And to add to that, I, I think that 
some organizations, they are just like, my use case is so unique. It is just for me. I've never come across this before. And we're like, mm, take a step back. And maybe if you just substitute your problem with someone else's problem, you know, just a small little application switch, you'll realize that there's general themes of problems and that your problem most likely is not unique. Honestly, we've seen hundreds, if not thousands of use cases now when it comes to AI. Yeah and they all fall within these general themes. So uh, on our podcast with you, we talk about this growth mindset, right? And so right. you wanna really be open to learning and understanding. And if you say, if you're not so close-minded and you go, maybe if, if I just look at it from a little bit different lens, I can, there's so much that I can learn from others and, and from these use cases. And that's why we're big advocates of use case repositories because it helps you understand what others have done. We always say learn from others, right? You do not need to be making these mistakes yeah. yourself. And, 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 and it's great. And I'll lead into one of you brought up the centers of excellence and I'll go where I see one failure mode from that. And then we'll get into what, what things happen wrong when we combined agile and AI projects. And you can mention a couple quote agile things. Um, the one thing I see with centers of excellence is when those centers of excellence start getting into, um, we're going to tell everyone how to do their job, how to do their thinking process. They go to the, they might call it the PMP world, though I love PMP. I'm a PMP. I like everything about it, but people overdo it and they don't understand why the questions are there. And I think they get into, well, you know, everyone should do this, but they don't explain or no one understands why you should do this. And that's where I think, and, and, and that, so that's just one thing I, I always caution people when they do it. They think now it's my time to tell everybody how to do their job because I know better than anybody else. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, so with that, what kind of things have you seen that caused the agile and and AI community to collide when it comes to building something? Yeah, I think I think like the the first area is that um, some things in the process require time, um, especially if you have this issue, I think the biggest one is, of course, data, which is mm -hmm. that you don't always have access to the data you want. The data you want may not necessarily be in the quality or have the information you need, right? I mean, of course, everybody wants perfectly Amazing accurate data. Yeah. I, know. I was laughing. You're like, it may not be in the quality you need. I'm like, it's, oh, I know. Not. it's, never yeah. in the it's most likely about 100% not the way you want it. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. I, I would pretty go that much. far. So, so, the, so the the problem is, is sort of like there's so sometimes the sort of the wishful thinking. Uh, I think it was uh, Kathleen. You might remember this. I think it was Anthony Scrifignano on on the. He's he's the executive vice president, data head of data science at Dun and Bradstreet, and he was telling us about like it's the data you want, but it's like it's like the data you actually have, and the challenge is is extracting the value from what you have because you'll never get the data that you want. And I think this is kind of yeah. where we see a lot of that that head bunny. Right? So it's, it's something like that, right? From my memory. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think just in general too, uh, Agile is a very, maybe I was going to say understood, but I think it's a very well adopted, at least to the fundamental principles of it, right? But we, but what we did when we were, you know, looking at uh, AI projects is we said, well, we need to add. They're they're really fundamentally data projects, and so you need to understand that they're data projects. So how can you take kind of uh, both of these concepts and combine them together. And that's why we're, you know, big advocates of the CPM AI methodology, which we had talked about. And I know that yeah. uh, you had mentioned our course. And so for uh, for your viewers, they can go to AIToday.live slash CPM AI to take that free intro course and maybe give them a little bit more understanding of, uh, you know, how both of the agile and data fit together for this AI methodology. Oh, and definitely, definitely. And, and, but, and I, and I want to just think about what you said about people understand. I would actually offer, I don't think they understand the, the Agile concept. They know these frameworks. Oh, I know we have a sprint. And I know we have this. And we're supposed to do this. And then why you do it. They don't know the why or the how or what it's supposed to result in. And I, and I think that that's one of the things that really messes a lot of that stuff up. <laughs> they get into, oh, we're doing Agile. But you're not really Agile. Yes, you're doing a framework and you and someone taught you the framework, but they didn't tell you why that framework should be working. 
And I think that was actually even a bit of a challenge for us because there's there's the things about Agile that that are really very helpful, especially this idea of iterative sprints and thinking really in terms of of you know the going right to the customer demand and not trying to over plan and put too much into you know over documentation, which is why we have sort of this visceral reaction. Yeah. Someone tells us that these projects are twelve to eighteen months, so like we just feel that that's not right. That can't possibly, can't be right. But but then. But I think sort of, you know, we've been looking at sort of those iterative aspects and thinking, okay, well, what, what, what are the tools that already exist? We don't want to reinvent the yeah. wheel. It's like people have already done a lot of thinking about this. As, as Kathleen just mentioned, our problems are probably not that unique. So what can we do to look outside of, of this world, even the world of, of data science, mm -hmm. which hasn't really, doesn't really have that much in the way of established uh, project management methodology, even though we're, we're one of these gigantic projects with a lot of data. You know, mm -hmm. to be totally honest, and people are just kind of winging it, you know, which is which is scary. Scary, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you said the winging part. You'd be amazed. And Kathleen, you mentioned about the data. How many times I work with teams, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna do this." Wait, so wait. Do me a favor. I said, "Do a." Sp we call it a spike in the agile world, where you're just doing a little experiment. Now, a spike is only supposed to be like a day or two. It's not a ten week spike. It's two days. Let's just see what we got, and. Every team I worked with that said, do me a favor, write a little spike, just go check the data out, make sure you can get through all the firewalls, by the way, to get the data, because you don't know what, what barriers are to getting that, and then look at the data, and so many people that do this data analysis, like, oh my God, I'm so glad we did that, because I had no idea this is what condition the data was in. You know, they're thinking one thing, and it was totally different from what they were told. Yeah, that's actually phase. That's that's uh, the phase two in CPM is called data understanding. And there's actually two sides to data understanding, which is understanding what data you actually need, which may be different than what what you think you need. Yeah. And then of course, understanding kind of what's the state of the data that you have. Those two things need to match up. And in the methodology, you can't actually you can't really proceed to the next step, which is data preparation. You certainly can't do model evaluation mm -hmm. or development or evaluation or deployment until you have a fundamental data understanding. If the data understanding doesn't match up. There's this thing called the AI Go No Go, which mm -hmm. was actually developed by Intel. I think was like these nine checklists, and there's there's the data there's the data traffic lights, and it's like if if the data you think you need does not match up the data you have, you can't actually uh, move forward. So do something, either change what you think you need, or mm -hmm. change the data, or say project is not possible. Some some things got yes. to yeah. change. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I guess we're getting down to the end. I want to talk about your CPMAI certification a little bit and your methodology you came up with. In that methodology, if I was going to go, re would be things that I would see from an Agile perspective that I go, oh, this sounds very similar to this concept in that methodology that you came up with. Yeah, so um, maybe first a little bit of a history uh, of CPMAI because there was actually a pre-existing methodology for what's called for data mining that had existed for about 20 some odd years in 1999 the first version of something called crisp dm was released a cross industry standard process for data mining that's their terminology it was like uh five companies ibm and nec and spss and i think two other firms they come up with this approach and the and the reason why they did that is because at the time if you remember in the late 1990s we were having all this data but it was not very fast. So if I had to, you know, back then even gigabytes of data, let alone terabytes was like, you know, if I had to do an analysis project that had to like say retrieve a bunch of information and do some sort of reporting. And I said, I needed to do that in a very short amount of time. It actually took a lot of work to be able to do that. We didn't have the big data uh, uh, platforms that we have now. We hadn't invented any of that sort of stuff. So we said, well, let's, let's at least come up with a process because if it's going to take us two weeks or three weeks just to make that work, let's make sure we're asking the right question before we go through all this work. And so they came up with this methodology called CRISPDM, which is really a, truly a project management methodology for saying, figure out what the business understanding is, figure out what data you, the, the, you need, figure out how do you prepare the data. Um, but, it, but they developed it, but they hadn't done any further work on it. It kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot has happened in the past 20 some odd years. One, we have big data. Two, we have Agile. So it wasn't built in Agile fashion. The idea was that there was, I think you had referred to it as, it wasn't Agile, but it was the other one. It was- uh, Scrumafall. Uh, Scrumafall, <laughs> which is like, like within it, it was still, a there was no iteration. It was just sort of yeah. like 
fixed. It's just you did a whole bunch of chunks of a fixed, you know, a fixed waterfall. Right, right. So, so, um, so what? What about about uh, about a about a decade ago, or less than a decade decade ago, we were actually doing work with a major bank, and also with the major government uh, organizations because we mm-hmm. we had a lot of AI clients and that, and we found ourselves having to pull together the methodology because their time frames were not that long. And <laughs> right. So and so what we did, we basically took CrispDM, extended it so it had six phases extended those six phases to basically make them more relevant to machine learning. So it's around model evaluation, uh, algorithm, all things you have to do there. And then from that, we borrowed concepts from Agile. The couple of concepts we borrowed were the Agile team charters, the uh, uh, the user stories, mm-hmm. and aspects of sort of the Agile backlog and things like that where where we, we didn't want to reinvent the structure for thinking about iterations primarily. And actually, we're looking at bringing, you know, maybe even enhancing the methodology even more specifically. I know, Kathleen, I spoke a lot there, but <laughs> did you want to? Yeah, no, that was a really great overview. And I think what's incredibly important, and even though Chris jam has been around for a while, and as we said, we enhanced it, what we stress, especially with CPM AI, is business understanding. That's phase one. Right. And you'd be surprised, you know, Ron said, Ron talked about phase two, data understanding. I mean, every phase obviously is incredibly important, but you would be surprised at how many people kind of want to skip phase one and then maybe phase two where they're like, well, we've just been told that AI is the new thing or you know, we just want to try it. So we're just going to move forward. And we're like, but are you solving a fundamental business problem? Uh-huh. You know, we had we had talked about uh, when you're looking at how you can apply AI to project management roles right. or, you know, anything, what fundamental problem are you solving? And is it going to help the business? And is the ROI, the return on investment going to be worth it? Because if it's not, don't do an AI project. Once you've said yes to that, then say, okay, do I have the data that I need? If you're really running into these roadblocks, then don't do it. But if you are not, then go ahead and move forward. And it's not, you, well, you can't run an AI project if you're doing it this way. You have to adjust your mindset with the scope of the project or you know, fit within the yeah. criteria that you have. So we found that when we're adopting different um, you know, methodologies that people, uh, I, I think, are bringing their expertise into this as well. And so as the uh you know practitioners are becoming more experienced and more educated right. as well things continue to evolve and change and so we're actually we're on version six now of cpm ai and ron mentioned we may be doing a version seven that incorporates even more of those uh you know agile concepts yeah i want to add to that I mean, that's the thing that i think has been very pleasantly um surprising for us because originally when we first started doing CPM AI and stuff like that. We were talking primarily to data scientists mm-hmm. and technologists and folks who said, "Hey, I got to do an AI project. Just I want I don't want to uh, you know burn a lot of time and money, so to help me you know expedite it." But now we're finding we're spending more and more of our time talking to traditional project managers, right. folks who have a lot of certs. You know, we'll get an email from them, and all of a sudden we're like, "Whoa, that's a lot of certifications in your." Yeah. 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 <laughs> like wasn't expecting you know you got the you got the pmi the pmp you got the scaled agile stuff a whole bunch of there you got some lean six sigma we got some we got all sorts of stuff itil we like we're like okay we're like so we're thinking hey you know um these folks uh who are project management have a lot of expertise have a mm-hmm. lot of knowledge not specific necessarily to ai projects right. but to other projects and we're thinking there's some synergy here so we're spending more and more and more of our time talking to project managers and we're finding more folks in project management they might not have thought that ai and big data is yeah. really the future but we're telling them this is not a bad career direction for yourself so actually a lot of times even for cpmei certification for the certification you go through the exam and all that sort of stuff we're finding a lot of folks in traditional project management roles especially now you mentioned the big r yeah are investing in themselves because yeah of growth trajectory and 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 one of the things with the project managers that I wish they would do more of, to be honest with you, and what I talk about, if you heard me when I talk about Scrum and Agile, it's about the interaction of people as much as this process and the grids and, and, uh, and the steps you take. It's about what you do every day because that's your most productive part. Sometimes I wish they would take an Agile coaching class and, and I'll 
you know, pl- I can plug some other ones, but they, everyone who listens will know what I'm talking about. And a facilitation class. How do you facilitate a meeting? How do you do it without being the one in charge? Because I'll be honest with you, where, where I see a lot of things with project managers, they try to be an expert in a field that they don't do 24-7. Like when I was managing a project and I had Georgia Tech PhDs in there, I'm not going to tell the PhDs how to do their job and design the the things they were building, you know, that is, that, that's not there. And I think sometimes these project managers think their job is to, to tell these really smart people how to do their job. And that's where they, and that's where that, you got to watch that when we build these, just because you have a framework and you have this doesn't mean you're the expert in how to do that. I, as I always said, I had one coworker, he was one of my system engineers. I said, he could build a tank in his garage. I'm not going to tell him how to do it. <laughs> that guy was so smart. It was crazy, you know. And um, by the way, this is Jerry. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> Maybe we make one of those robot dogs. Yeah, I know. Oh. You're, you're smart enough to tell me it's time to go. Um, but anyway, so any anything else you want to share with the audience here? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think honestly, it's like really, this is we, we'd love to hear from from more project managers. We'd love to, to hear from more of you. I mean, like we make ourselves available. Um, you know, you can reach out to us. You can, of course, all check out our AI Today podcast. We, you know, you, you can educate yourself. We spend a lot of our time uh, just providing basic education. Uh, you know, on the podcast, so you can listen to it. We have a glossary series coming up soon. We just kind of go through the key terms and we explain them. Even though we've been doing this for five years, it's like, well, we haven't done that yet. Yeah, like, that's another like. 50 episodes, you know, <laughs> so, so, far. so we're going to do that. But, um, you know, and, and also, or, or just reach out to us and you know, tell us if you think you're interested in, you know, doing more in this field, or, or maybe you will, you even want to help us. I mean, we're, we are open to folks who are bringing in project management, agile expertise, scrum expertise. We'll freely admit we, we are not experts in that. That's not our expertise, agile and scrum. However, we, we see, you know, we do our experts in AI and data. Yeah, definitely. And we, we, you know, we definitely see the whole chocolate and peanut butter thing here. It's a, it's a good combination. So, yeah. you know, let, let's make everybody more successful. Let's achieve the outcomes we want. So that's what I have. I don't know, Kathleen, you have anything you want to add, but that's what I have. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd encourage, uh, you know, all of all of your listeners and viewers to go to AIToday.live slash CPMAI. Take our free intro to CPMAI course. And then once you've done that. I mean, obviously we would love your feedback on, you know, where folks think that they can apply even more value, especially with Scrum and Agile, as we are not the experts in that, Um, because we are looking to make this, you know, even more robust. We can continue to iterate on it. And we have been, like I said, we're now in version six. So, um, so yeah, I would definitely encourage them to just check out AI Today podcast episodes, check out the free intro course and reach out. Yeah, and I would definitely do the same. I would, I always encourage my listeners to listen to and, and viewers to go like the AI p- podcast, listen to that, see what's out there. Because they're, it, everyone's kind of talking about there's a murmur, you know, we're going to do artificial intelligence and this is what it is. And, and then I kind of wonder if those people really understand what it is and everything like that. So, and, 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 and then they, with our live, we have this, we have a dog, <laughs> Jerry. You're going to take out the whole setup, aren't you? Anyway, so with that, I want to close up with we we do on our on our show a weekly Friday, um, the Friday fortune cookie episode where these agile accountants come mm-hmm. and give us a fortune cookie. And there's a message in here wrapped in secret thing. And these agile accountants are those who want the velocities and want to check the boxes and and i'll be honest with you some of the people that come over from the pmp world to go into the agile they all complain about them oh they want this and they gotta have that and they gotta have this and i just want to build something right <laughs> so that's what these agile accountants they send us a message and in this message we have to apply it to whatever we just talked about so I'm going to read the message, but I'm going to do this because we can always use donations. So we have some lucky numbers. Go with the lucky numbers here. So we have lucky numbers 35, 25, 41, 44, 10, and 30. So if anybody wins a lottery with those lucky numbers, everyone on the show will will be more than happy to take some, you know, if you want to donate money to our shows, we'll take it. You know, I don't think anybody is. um, And this is the first. So. Mm. 
this is uh, so I usually don't get repeats, but this is a repeat, and we did it on yours, and you can have this, so you can think about what we talked about. Oh, is it the <laughs> it's the same one, and this is really rare. I rarely get this, but I guess with you, I get the same one. A person is born to live, and not prepare to live. So based on what we just talked about on our show here, this in the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show, how would you apply some of that to that? A person is born to live and not prepared to live. Well, I will tell people that I'm not going to give the same answer that we gave on our podcast. So you'll have to listen to the AI Today hey. podcast to hear that other yes, answer. Yes. But like, you know, I think, you know, if I had to think about this differently, and especially the stuff we had talked about here about preparing to live, which is that, Especially if you're thinking about, you know, if you're a, if you're in a project management role right now, we just talked about that, and you're thinking about the big R, and you're thinking about kind of, you know, what's going to happen in the future. Um, you know, you you should take actions. So, like, you know, take actions to bring yourself to kind of where you think you might want to be anyway. Do you want to wait for the world to to give you that kick and tell you, um, you know, that you should be doing something different, or do you want to actually make that choice? There was a an interesting news story that I saw the other day about how someone um, was fired from their job because um, they were they had like they were on some sort of teleconference or Zoom or something I don't know what it was and they were all and then they decided they were filming a TikTok of themselves and it was it was I don't know if you heard the story but like it had nothing to do with the the conference it was just like oh they forgot to put a cup in their coffee maker and the coffee maker was going and there's no cup and they're like don't I feel like an idiot like yeah. this in those moments but they got fired for their job because the recording was going on in the background um. and they they said hey you can't be broadcasting our uh, stuff it was not intentional and of course it was it was very I was very sad to hear them like I'm like man that's pretty harsh to fire someone for a job for that but then she's like you know what I was thinking of starting my own business anyways yeah and this was that motivation to kick me there I'm thinking well you know, maybe, maybe there's, maybe the, maybe the world is telling you, you see, mm -hmm. live instead of prepare to live. That's just a, another op, another answer to that to that question. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think about that as well. With as we had talked about with the growth mindset, and on uh, our AI Today podcast when we were interviewing you, Greg, you talked about you know interviewing millionaires, and not one of them has never recommended to read a book or to better themselves in some way. You know, continuing education, and I think that that's the same thing. You need to continuously learn uh, over the course of your life so that you can continue to be prepared. And I'll go off that because I was thinking about. Go check out your free class on AI. Oh, and and definitely follow the AI podcast, um, AI Today podcast, because you can't prepare. You just got sometimes you just got to do. And like, oh, we'll think about AI later. Do it now. Just take take the weekend. Go re, go listen to it. Go watch it. Do, go engage so that you are now can live what people are talking about. So with that, I want to thank you both for coming on board and doing this, this share of our podcasts and our shows. And now you're going to be YouTube famous. You know, you weren't <laughs> thinking about it, but now you're now you now you're living in YouTube. I just didn't even shave for you guys. That that's fine. <laughs> um, and I want to thank you all. And that was great. And I appreciate it. And you have a great day. And and as I say, happy scrumming. Thank you so much for having us. We really have appreciated it. It was a great time on both our podcast and on your podcast. Yeah, definitely. Thank Thanks. you, too. Okay.